This class is in memory of Jared Orchen. And today we're going to learn about Miriam, the prophetess, Miriam and Nevia. We will start on page 261. Just to know, the name Miriam has two meanings. Miriam means bitter. Mar. And if you take out the Reish, Miriam is mine. Men, Yud, men. Take out the Reish, it's mine. Water. Mm -hmm. Miriam is connected to water from the beginning to the end. Mm. It's all about water. The first time we learn about Miriam, we don't have her name. No name. Nameless person. The whole story is nameless. Right? It starts on page 261, number one, Mo chapter two, number one. Go ahead. A man of the house of Levi went and married Levi's daughter. A man of the house of Levi, no names. Mm -hmm. A man of the house of Levi went and married the daughter of Levi, of a Levi. Fine. Okay. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She realized how extraordinary the child was, and she kept him hidden for three months. Okay, the, the Talmud comes here and tells to this man marrying a woman is unusual. Why? Because she was three months old. Okay, continue. When, when she could no longer hide him, she took a papyrus box, coating it with asphalt and pitch, and she placed the child in it. She placed it in the rushes near the bank of the Nile. Mm -hmm. The child's sister stood herself at a distance. Let's stop see. right here. If there is a child sister, obviously the couple was married before, mm -hmm. right? He says a man married a woman and they had a baby. Where is a sister coming from? Obviously it was a sister before. Comes the Talmud and tells us, well, the men and all the women and all the sister. The Talmud doesn't make this up because, as we as in Sumer know, that's Moses. Later it's written that Moses... The, the name of Moses' father, and Moses' mother, and Moses' sister. That if we know the names of all these three, then we know that who they were. It was Amram was Moses' father, and his mother was named Yochevet. And they had, a, they had a, a daughter and a son, because it's, we read it, it's written in the Torah later. Miriam was the daughter, she was the oldest one. Then they had a son with the name Aaron. It was a very nice American Jewish family, <laughs> with a boy and a girl. And they were about, and then came out this crazy decree from this evil king, his name is Pharaoh, and he ordered to throw every Jewish baby male to the river, to the Nile River. Amram, who was the leader of the Jewish people, says, he said, I cannot take responsibility for such things. Better not to have children. And he, as he shows, as he leads by example, he divorced his, his wife. That's a normal thing to do. That's what, in his way, that was, it was also almost like a demonstration against God. How, God. how can you allow such a thing? We will never have children. Amram did it. The rest of the Jewish men follow suit. They got divorced. What's the point to have children? For what? Medrash says, the sister, Miriam, the little girl. Miriam was five years old, six years old, something like this. For sure, not a young girl. She got up and she told her father, you are worse than Pharaoh. What do you mean you are worse than Pharaoh? She told him, Pharaoh only made a decree to kill the boys. By not having children, will be no boys and no girls. Then what? Pharaoh is an evil man. Today is a life. Tomorrow he can die, right? Then, then, then the decree will stop. But if you, if men, if people, if Jewish families are divorced, there will be nothing. We will have not boys and not girls. That was, so far, was the lecture that she gave him. It's called a Musa speech. She gave him like a, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
So a question, why is it then hidden in the text? I mean, the Torah is very rich in some ways and poor in others. Why, why would Hashem hide it at this, mask it at this point and then provide details later? Why the name is are not co are yeah, covered yeah, why, up? Yeah, why is it covered up? Because we want to point to bring out Moses. Because it's all about to bring the most important part of the story, that Moses was born. Should the first person gets a name in this little story is Moses. Okay. Then everybody else. Later we go and say, you know who Moses is? He has a father and he has a mother. He's not uh, somebody we picked him up in the river. He's a person who is, who is coming from a very distinguished uh, family. But at that point, when he was found by the river, Pharaoh's daughter didn't know who he is. He was a nobody, from your point of view. Then, but then she told um, um, her father something very interesting. After she gave him the speech, and she told them that uh, it's not right to do such things, she told them, I prophesy that my mother will give birth to the Redeemer of the Jewish people. That's what she told them. Aha, uh -huh, now you're talking. At the young age, she told them? At five or six years old. Interesting enough, you almost don't have stories of biblical people of the, when their children. Who you know a story about a child of doing things? I mean, Moses is born. Yeah. Abraham, the first story. How old is Abraham and God when the Torah tells 40, about in the first story? 40, when 40, the Torah said the Torah reads, reads oh, 75. 75. Isaac, not as a child. Yeah, he gave him a breeze. That's it. He didn't do anything. Jacob and Esau, the children grow up to be, and one was this and one was this. There is no stories of children. I cannot even recall, you. can anybody recall Joseph, any story? 17. 17, again, not, not five, not seven, not nine. Ishmael at 13. Also, what his father asked him if he wants to be circumcised, he said yes. Yeah. Only, Re only Rebecca at the, at the well. Rebecca at the well. Yeah, that's true. That she was young, also not so clear in the Bible how young she was. Some opinions say three, some people say twelve or thirteen. Then, uh, but you're right, Rebecca. Another example. You see, if there is any stories, it's about women, not about men. I'm serious. Here she comes and she gives a prophecy, and the interesting part is, her father, her father is 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 uh, is listening to her. And he remarries his wife, and who would then stand the wedding? Aaron and Miriam. <laughs> okay. Obviously, it wasn't there. It didn't bring 500 guests to the wedding. It was Aaron and Miriam. She married, he remarried, and you know what? A child was born, and the child that was born, as the Talmud says, the old house became illuminated and the baby was born. What does this mean? Hello. Mm -hmm. The whole house became illuminated. It means to say, anybody who looked on the baby saw this is a special child. That's not a normal child. And your father told her, oh, oh, Miriam, you know what you're talking about. That she became a prophetess by the age of five or six. Very young. That's no, no question I can mm -hmm. about. Three months passed. The baby, the baby is, he, he cannot eye them anymore. There's, you have to do with them something. The, the father said to her, Amram tells Miriam, no, Miriam, no. What's it, your prophecy? You're a chokham to tell me to have a child. Now what? You said he's going to be the redeemer. Exactly what's going to be with him? That they put him into the, in, they decided to put him in the river. What was the logic behind putting him in the river? couple of things. One, the prophecy because uh, th that he should be protected by the water, that, that, that it, they can't see him through it, that it... You're going far, 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 far. Yeah. What's on a regular... You are the mother. You, the, the Egyptian police, KGB is looking for him, for a baby, every Jewish baby boy. You don't want to, you want to hide them. Say, so, oh, I cannot hide them anymore. You know what? I'll put them in the river. Babies so, are being drowned in the river, so any cries so, are going to be masked by, or they're, they're not going to be suspicious because, you know, baby in the river, of course there are babies being thrown in the river. No, that they wanted to throw him in the river and lie there? What, no, what no, was the logic? Be cries. You're turning it over to Hashem. It's in Hashem's yeah. hands. Yeah, and and why? You wouldn't what? hear it. The mother wouldn't then, hear then it. Then why in the river? I would put him in a, 
and the, and the mall, the crazy, sh I mean, what's the logic behind it? Why in the river? What was the like? Put him, put him, give him up for adoption. You want to, you want, he wants to die, give him over to the police, let them do it. I mean, wait for the police to come and whatever will be, will be. You are going and you're killing him yourself. I mean, what? Did they know that that's where the Pharaoh's daughter would, always was? They had no Did clue that Pharaoh's well, daughter is going to well, come and find them. they didn't technically put him in the river. They put him on the bank and allowed... The, yeah, the, the, and then will be, what will be them? Yeah, what do you think? What do you think will be them? How long can a baby be in a box on the river? No, I understand. It's because it's, it's, it's up to Hashem. The logic is that every Jewish baby, the destiny of every Jewish baby boy was to make it to the river. That you have it so that my son is not going to escape the destiny of the Jewish people. If, you, if that's what God wants every baby to go, I better put it myself down and then leave it up to God. Will we see the same logic in the story of Esther? Esther was by the king. And Mordechai tells her, go beg the king to change the decree of Haman, right? The story of Purim. And Esther says, he didn't call me for 30 days, the king. And if you come to the king without being sum summoned, you've been killed. That the first line that Mordechai told her is, don't think that, by be that you will escape the destiny of the Jewish people from all the, from all the Jews because of being by the king. That means to say, if, all the, if God decided that all the Jews should die, God forbid, don't think you're going to escape the, des the destiny. That's what Yochevet knew too. Yochevet said, I'll put them in the river. Every Jewish boy has to make it to the river, I'll put them in the river. And now we'll leave it up to God. If, if that's the direction, I'll go there too. Her way of saying it wasn't Pharaoh's decree, it was really God's decree. If, if everybody, nobody can escape it, then this is it. That's what my, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's meant to be. I'll put them there and now I'll leave it up to God. Who is going after the baby to see what will happen? The normal reaction would be the mother, yeah. the father, the mother. That would be the normal thing. She cannot leave your child. It's a mother. The father, the, bo the brother was younger. I mean, uh, an aunt, who knows? Who? A young girl, she went there. Why she went there? Because she gave the prophecy. She felt responsible for it. That even she was very young, and even in the movie, it's very hard to, 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 to hide there in the, in the, in the, by the river. She stood there to see what will happen to him. What would happen to him, right? That was the language. Now we'll go to page 263 in the top of the page. Pharaoh's daughter went to bathe in the Nile while her maids walked along the Nile's edge. She saw the box in the rushes and sent her slave girl to fetch it. Opening the box, she saw the boy. The infant began to cry, and she had pity on it. It is one of the Hebrew boys, she said. Okay, Pharaoh's daughter found him. That was, I mean, talking about miracles, that's the chief, the top miracle. That she came and she saw him. She opened the box. How she know he was Jewish? First of all, it was uh, who is, which baby is by the river by itself? It would be a Jewish baby. Number two, according to the matter, she was circumcised. That you know, at that time, it wasn't the common thing to circumcise. It was it was a very normal thing. It was it was only a Jewish Jewish people did it. That obviously was Jewish. That she not be like in the movie. She he didn't have a talus or anything like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> was before the days of Talasin. She saw it's a Jewish baby. Now she sees a baby who is crying. Right? It's, the text said it. She was crying. She said it's a Jewish baby. For sure the baby is crying. He's hungry. He's just he's three months old. Now the sister stands there. Miriam. What should Miriam do? Should she come over to him? To tell her... Is a Jewish baby, is it good? Is it bad? This moment of decision, what Miriam should do, that takes a profit. To come over, to make this one moment decision, to come over and to say, let's read what, what, what happened. Number seven. Huh? The infant sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? 
that's an, <laughs> that takes a lot of chutzpah to say such a thing. She comes to, Pharaoh's daughter is the daughter of Hitler who comes down and she finds a baby. The natural thing you would think, she will take the baby, a dwarf, throw him straight in the river, at the best, give him over to the authorities and let the authorities do with them the right thing. Now she comes over to, to uh, uh, Miriam, she can, uh, the normal, even more she could say, maybe we'll give it up for, to, to back to the Jewish people. Here, Miriam comes to her and says, you're looking to a way to, to she probably tried to nurse her. If she's telling her, you, uh, you want, you're looking for a nurse, obviously, Pharaoh's daughter was looking for a nurse. She says, I'll bring you a Jewish nurse. She says, yeah, go. The, the prophecy that Miriam has is different than the prophecy of the prophets. Because it has to be more direct. She's not getting this in a dream or anything like it's that. It's not. It, it's not even in the Torah text. It's not. A, I mean, prophecy. It's to do the right thing at the right moment, and to get up and to do it, and it works. You know, it's Paul's prophecy. It came from God. To get up and to go to this woman and to tell her to the daughter of Pharaoh, the daughter of the king, the most powerful king in the world. A Jewish girl gets up and says she's from the slave, she's from the minority who's persecuted and tortured and killed. And to go to Pharaoh's daughter and tell her, you want I should call a Jewish? And she says, go. That was an unbelievable miracle right there. And that's Pharaoh's that's Miriam did it. So did Miriam get the prophecy that Moses was going to be saved by Pharaoh's daughter? No. Miriam, Miriam had a prophecy that he's going to be the redeemer of the Jewish people. That whatever will be, this guy will be saved. That if now we have to go and to tell her, or bring you a Jewish, a Jewish nurse, then that's what will, will work. This intuition, this moment of making the decision and going over and saying the right word and, work, and it should work, that's, that's God's walking through people. Then the prophecy was in the beginning, she told her father that a Jewish baby, my, my mother is going to give birth to, a Jewish, to the Jewish Redeemer. But now to take care of the Redeemer. Think about it. First of all, two things here. Number one, who saved Pharaoh? Who saved Moses, I'm sorry? Pharaoh's daughter. Three women. Pharaoh's daughter, Miriam, and you have it. Three women saved the Redeemer of the Jewish people. Not only this, the first story with Miriam is mine, connected to water. It was right by the water. She was there standing by the water. Moses was redeemed, was saved because of the, from the water. Right? She told her, go. Let's finish the story. Go replied. Go replied Pharaoh's daughter. The young girl went and got the child's own mother. Take this child and nurse it, said the Pharaoh's daughter to the mother, and I will pay you a fee. The woman took the child and nursed it. When the child matured, his mother brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. She adopted him as her own son and named him Moses, Moshe. Mm -hmm. I bore Mash. Mm -hmm. Mash, yeah. I bore him from the river, she said. Then it's unbelievable. First of all, the story cannot get any better. You cannot even make up such a story. Not only they, they pay the mother to nurse the baby. <laughs> the real mother. Then the real mother. And then when the child grows up, <laughs> but she has to give him up. She has to give him up. The separation, the pain, the, it's even worse after you nurse the child for two years, whatever it was the time. But what Pharaoh's daughter called them Moshe, the name made a statement. I draw him out of the water. My father draws all the babies to the water. I'm taking him out from the water. That Pharaoh's daughter was the opposite of Pharaoh. And in Pharaoh's house, she was raised a Jewish boy. Everybody knew it's a Jewish boy. There was no mistakes there. And Pharaoh's daughter decided that that's her baby and finished. And even the big Pharaoh who controls the whole world he was, didn't, have enough, didn't have strength over his daughter. She was he's going to start, it, uh, start, start up with her. She'll start to cry and yell. She'll make her turn over the whole house. Okay, you want this, 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 shine. As long as you find peace in the house, right? <laughs> Anything. That's the first story with Miriam. But Miriam's name is not named. It's not mentioned. Pharaoh, it's Moses' sister. Here she is Moses' sister. The second story of Miriam is in this week's Parsha. Before we get there. Yes, uh, Pharaoh's daughter. This is really the first example, or maybe the second, of uh, uh, of civil disobedience. I mean, you've got the the, the the two midwives who refuse to do what Pharaoh says. Mm -hmm. You've got Pharaoh's According daughter. According to the Medrash, yeah. the two midwives were Yochavet and Miriam. Mm -hmm. She from Pua. Mm -hmm. That was Yochavet and Miriam. Yes. 
it's not only civil, that's the first example of something much more than that. Pharaoh's daughter is the first righteous Gentile. Pharaoh's daughter is a statement that she sh we should not lose hope in people. When you walk, you are in the middle of the Holocaust, you look around, millions are killing, and then the whole world says nothing. Did you say to yourself, you know what? It's not worth it to be alive in such a world. There is no good, nothing good here. And then you see this little thing of good people who are risking their life to save lives. And no, they don't have an obligation. Pharaoh's daughter was the first example in this old horrible story of the suffering of Jews in Egypt. Pharaoh's daughter was the light. That even in Pharaoh's house can something good come out. Don't give up. It's not the end of the world. Many people after the Holocaust were very disillusioned. They didn't want to do anything. They want to have children. They didn't want to, uh, uh, to deal with life. It's, it's a bad world. Look what's going on. He said there is good people in everything and everywhere. Don't give up. The 25,000 people who are mentioned, who are uh, engraved in, in, the, in the Yad Vashem as the people who risk their life to save Jews, that's the hope of humanity. To say that everybody is bad is easy, but it's very hard, because if everybody is bad, we are bankrupt. That's over. We just the opposite. The Torah teaches us, look, Pharaoh's daughter. In, the, in Pharaoh's house, the worst place, the, the best thing happened. Now we'll go to page three. Um, this week's parsha, page three, three, three thirty-one. This week's parsha, Beshalach, is about the splitting of the sea. The Jewish people are going out from Egypt. They are coming to the sea. The Egyptian running behind them. The Jews get all frustrated. They start to pray to God and complain to Moses. That's a normal reaction. That's the way it goes. You pray to God and you complain to Moses. How do you take us out of Egypt? God made an unbelievable miracle. The splitting of the sea, the whole nation is going through. And then the Egyptians are running after them, are running straight into the water and being swallowed up. The Jewish people, Moses taught the famous song of the sea. Or Az Yashir Moshe. It's so powerful and so important in Jewish tradition that we say it every day in the prayers. Every morning we say Az Yashir Moshe, the prayer from this parasha. And in some synagogue, it's, it's even written in the Torah, if you look on the page before, on page 329, it's written like poetry. That's the way it's written in the Torah itself. It's not written with regular lines. A beautiful... Moses is leading the old Jewish nation. If you look at the beginning on page 327, it's written, Moses and the Israelites then sang this song to God. Right? The whole nation was singing. Is this the only song? The only time that it... There is one more time. Yeah. yeah. In, uh, in the end of the Torah, by uh, Zinu. One, two songs like this. Then, that's... Everybody's singing. Looks like everything was good, right? Everybody was singing and praising God. Beautiful. Look to page 331. Miriam's song. Who's supposed to read? Is this cousin? Go ahead. 19? Yeah, 20. Miriam, the prophetess, iron sister, took the drum in her hand, and all the women followed her with drums and dancing. Miriam led them in the response. Sing to God for his great victory, horse and riders. He can, he cast in the sea. Okay, first of all, what happened here? This story is also with water, right? Mm -hmm. Miriam with water, has to do with the water. Miriam the prophetess, she took, she, she, she's, she's named Miriam the prophetess. First of all, we know her name, Miriam. Not only Miriam, the prophetess. Very few people get in the Bible, not even about Moses. It's not written Moses the prophet. It's written that Moses was a prophet. Don't get me wrong. But the title Moses the prophetess is not there. Miriam the prophetess is the only prophet in the Bible that's named Miriam the prophetess is, is Miriam. Not, any, not Aaron the prophet, not Moses the prophet, not Jacob the prophet. Nobody. Miriam the prophetess. Then we give her and we say, we tell, we say, you know who Miriam is? Aaron's sister. Why not Moses' sister? <laughs> Moses is the claim to fame. Didn't she save Moses, right? Why Aaron's sister? 
And then what they did, they took the tambourines, right? They took, um, all, she took all the women with the drums. And the tambourine says, where are their drums from? The Jewish women had such faith in God that they had drums with them. They said, we're going to have such miracles. It's going to be unbelievable. We're going to sing, sing and dance. And it's going to be, they had so much faith that they prepared the drums to, 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 to sing with, to dance with. There is a story about two women came to a Hasidic Rebbe in Poland to ask for a blessing for children. He gave them both a blessing. And then a year later, one of them had a baby, the other one didn't. The other one who didn't have the baby came this, to this Rebbe, she told him, Rebbe, well, I'm not good enough, why? Here yes and me not. He says, I don't know, I gave both of you the same blessing. Go ask her what she did after the blessing. He says, I went to ask her to say, what you did after? He said, after the blessing, I went to the store and I bought a, a bassinet and I bought a carriage and I bought diapers and bottles and everything. I was, that he came, she comes back to the Rebbe, she said, that's what she did. He says, ill fate in the blessing made the blessing become a reality. The Jewish women were so sure that it's good. when you are ready to, to prepare uh, tambourines to go to celebrate, you have faith that, it, that it's going to work out. And the Jewish women who had children in Egypt, the men did not want to have children. The Jewish women seduced the men to have children because they believe that it's going to be good. Don't worry about it. Just let's have the children. It's going to work out. Then that's their tambourines. And not only they were singing, they were dancing too. Then can religious women can, can sing in front of men? What's going on there? Right? You're not allowed to. What's, what? If they're seducing the men, they can. And not in the right, they, their own yeah, men, but they cannot the seduce the other yeah. men. <laughs> it doesn't work like this. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> they can dance and sing in the bedroom, they can dance, dance the night away. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> the answer is that it was such a revelation of godliness there. There was no evil. What? Why are we afraid? We are afraid of seduction. We are afraid of the evil inclination that will take the wrong turn. At the splitting of the sea, it's written that it was the revelation of God. Every maidservant at the sea saw God on a higher level that Ezekiel saw, that Isaiah saw. The Talmud says a, a maidservant that by the sea saw greater, a greater revelation than the greatest prophets later saw. They saw only a, on a lower level. There, it was such a big miracle. It was like God came full force. When God is there, no, no, nobody has any thoughts of other things. It was such a strong revelation of God that now was nothing to be afraid. But that's all the side story. The real question here is, Miriam is running your own show. What's going on here? Isn't it Moses of the leader? What is this for a business? Finally, Moses became the leader. It wasn't so simple. I'll show you two pages before that, how Moses just now really got his authority. On page 327, right before the song, the first, the number 31 before the song. You want to read, Howard? Uh -huh. One. In the middle of the line. The Israelites no, saw. The Israelites saw the great power that God had unleashed against Egypt. And the people were in awe of God. They believed in God and in his servant Moses. They finally <clears throat> believed in God and Moses' his servant. Finally, Moses gets his authority, comes his sister, and is doing whatever she wants. What a chutzpah. And the Jewish people already was, it's not written anywhere that she asked Moshe, Moses, I want to take a girl to dance with a woman. Would you mind? Nothing. And it's written according to Rashi that she was singing as long as a song as Moses was singing. It's written only one line, but she basically repeated the same song or something like this. Why she did it? The answer is Miriam the prophetess. She's a prophetess and she has enough authority to go and do. And if she's doing something, it's a prophecy. She had a prophecy, so to speak, to go and dance with the women. She didn't, she didn't need Moses' permission. She needs Moses' permission. She, because of fear, there is Moses. 
she gave the prophecy that Moses will be born. Then the Torah answers the question by giving her the title, Miriam the prophecy, the prophetess. If she's the, pro the prophet, no questions, no questions are asked. She can get up and run and run, run show after Moses visited Israel because she was a prophet. And that's alone that she doesn't have to ask Moses uh, permission shows that to a point she's greater than Moses. Just like Sarah was greater than Abraham in a certain level of prophecy. Obviously Moses is Moses, the, the ultimate prophet, but that was Mount Sinai. But could be until Mount Sinai, uh, uh, Miriam, uh, Miriam was greater than her. It, it's written about Sarah. When Sarah told Abraham to send away Ishmael, Abraham didn't want to. That God told Abraham, listen to what Sarah says. Why? Because she's greater than you. And Prophet Rashi says, from here we learn that Abraham was on a lower level of prophecy, prophecy than, than, than uh, Sarah. The same thing happened here. That Miriam, the prophecy, the prophetess, she got up and she led the old women with her, her own dance. And she had the authority. There is only one question left in this line. Why she is named the sister of Aaron and not the sister of Moses? Didn't she save Moses? If anything, she should be named after Moses, not the sister of Aaron. Then there is, Rashi says, because the one of the explanations that she Later, there is a whole story we're going to learn later that Aaron prayed for her. Aaron stood up for her, so to speak. Therefore, she's named after her. So to speak, Aaron saved them, saved their life. But the Rebbe says there is something very interesting. The Rebbe says there is Moses and Aaron at two ways how they led the Jewish people. Moses was more tough, tough love, it's called in America. He, he was the leader. He couldn't be nice to everybody, smiling. Yeah, do whatever you want. It's okay. <laughs> it doesn't work like this. He's a leader. He was a met. A met means the truth. He has to do what, it's need, what needs to be done. He was din. Din means um, judgment. Aaron was chesed. He was kindness. Aaron was loved peace and pursued peace. Aaron was a guy that everybody loved him. And that's why when Aaron died, actually, the whole nation of Israel mourned them. It's written in the Bible, I'll not make you turn pages too much, but it's written in the Bible when Aaron died, call Beit Israel, the whole house of Israel mourned them. It's not written by Moses, this language. It's written they mourned. Israel mourned, not the whole nation, the whole house of Israel. Because Aaron was more, uh, he used to make peace between us, between wife, between friends, he used to make... It's written in the Medrash, when Aaron died, there were 80,000 kids or 60,000 people who were named, were named already Aaron. Because every time when a couple wanted to get divorced and then Aaron made peace, they got together, they had a child, they named them what? Aaron. <laughs> then everybody was Aaron in, in, in the camp. That's how much he was loved. Moses was, was Dean. He was, he, was he was the authority. Will we see that it went the, the wrong way? Then when Moses... When having Aaron alone is not good enough, what do you think? Oh, the golden calf. The golden calf, right? Aaron, Moses was in, at Mount Sinai. Aaron was downstairs. Aaron tried to, to work it out. It didn't work out. Moses showed up. In a second, was no golden calf, was no nothing. Why? Because Moses was authority. Aaron was a nice guy. He, he couldn't do it. The Torah writes here, Miriam was Aaron's sister. The Torah wants to say what type of leadership was, uh, was, was Miriam. Then the Torah says she was like Aaron. You know, not every, usually women when they are leaders, they are tougher than the men. Like Margaret Thatcher was called the Iron Lady. Golda Meir used to call, be called the only man in the Knesset. <laughs> she was, the, the, the question is what type of leader was Miriam? The Talmud says, that the Torah says she was Aaron's sister. Aaron's sister means she was, she was nice, she was kind, she was loving, she was in a loving way the, the, the leader of the Jewish people. Now will we see that Moses, Aaron, and Miriam were the three leaders of the Jewish people? And the clouds of glory and water. And That's we know from the Medrash. Will we see in a text that they're all like lined up as one? Well, they have the, right before the whole story of Lush and Hara, they're sitting at the table, basically at a banquet. It's not, it's not written in the text. 
There was a prophet with the name Micha. Micha. Micah? Yeah, Micah. Reb Micah told us the story. In chapter is it? Let's see. Yeah, on page 1209. Number four. Who wants to read? Um, go ahead. For I brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage. I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Simple as that. I sent before you three leaders, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, in one line. As we know from the prophet Micah, that it was Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, three leaders. From this comes the cloud of glory and all of this. And right then, we know that Moses, Aaron, and Miriam are three leaders, and this is the second story. It is where it's written clearly that she was a prophet. Right after this story is a story with water, the bitter water. We go to page, back to page 331, right? There is a complaint that the Jews don't have the water. A minute later, it's again, she's con you see how she connected to water? Right there. Bitter and water. Bitter water. The third story of Miriam is, like you said, where is the next story about Miriam? Who knows? Oh, you're talking about... New Marcus scholars. Marcus 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 Where is it? <laughs> oh, page 721? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, yes. I think, uh, what, what's wrong here? Yeah, 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 yeah 721, yes. 721. It's in the book of, Bar it's in book of uh, numbers in, in Parshat Baalotcha, 721. That's the third story about Moses, about Miriam. That's already many. That's already a while later. Miriam here. There here is a story, a very interesting story. Not such a inspire. I mean, we'll see soon what we what 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 is happening here. Okay, let's start to read a little bit. Then we'll be able to understand what what happened. Miriam and Aaron complain. That's not nice. Doesn't sound good. And Aaron began speaking against Moses because of the dark-skinned woman he had married. The woman that Moses had married was indeed dark-skinned. Okay. They so. then went on to say, "It is. Uh, is it to, Mo to Moses? Ex is it to Moses exclusively that God speaks? Doesn't He also speak to us?" Okay. What's going on here? It was a time that Moses appointed new leaders, new prophets. Moses complained to God and he says, God, I cannot handle the Jewish people. But myself. God told them, okay, go, I, go I appoint 71, 70 leaders. 70 leaders, basically it's a whole story. Two people prophesied, according to one opinion, all the 70 prophesied. It was a big event. Everybody was sitting down. And Miriam said, how lucky... These people, this, this, the women of this man, that the husband that became the became the uh, became prophets, became leaders. They have the spirit of God in them. Zipporah was sitting next to her, and she says, eh, "Lucky, eh? that's it." She said, "What? Eh? What's what's wrong?" That she told her that since Mount Sinai, Moses doesn't know her anymore. I mean, he comes home, says hello and goodbye, but that's about it. That Miriam was upset. She turned to Aaron and she told them, Isn't only is, is Moses the only lead, the only one that God speaks to him? We also speak to God and we still live a normal family life. Moses basically, when he came down from Mount Sinai, he felt that he has to be ready for God at every minute. That he cannot engage in, in uh, marital relations. Then he wanted to be all, all for God. 
and they, but nobody ever heard about it. No, it was a personal thing. Suddenly, it like came out like, like in a second. Will Moses got the idea that he has to be with God and he cannot go back to the to the people. It's written um, on page eight ninety nine. I'm sorry for confusing you a little bit, but it's good. 899, the Torah describes the second the, the story of Mount Sinai. The Torah, the Torah repeats the whole story again. That in 899, Hashem tells the Jewish people, after, after Mount Sinai experience, He tells them a number 27. God tells Moses, go ahead. Go tell them to return mm -hmm. to their tents. Go tell them. Go tell the Jewish people return to your tents. You need to understand. Before Mount Sinai, three days before, the Jewish people were not allowed to <coughs> be engaged in marital relations. Now Mount Sinai is over. He tells Moses, go tell them they can go back home. But you, continue, you, however. I will declare, uh, wait, wait, wait. I just you, however, must remain here with me. Aha. Uh -huh. You, however, must remain with me. That Moses understood from this that is to remain with him for good. According to the Talmud, it was Moses' decision and God agreed. Moses felt it. It wasn't that God initiated it. Moses felt that this is the right thing and God said, God agreed with Moses' opinion. Now, then that's where it's coming. Now we go back to our story that Mo Aaron, Miriam speaks to Aaron about Moses. She's the older sister, right? She has the right. Why she was so concerned with, with Moses? Why she cared? You know why she cared? Miriam was always cared for having babies, right? Didn't Miriam convince her father to remarry her mother? Now she wants to do the same thing. She wants to convince Moses to go back to his wife. She's continuing to do what she did before, but she knows the best. She cares, she says, if Moses will give birth to another, another Moses, can you imagine? The Jewish people will miss out, because as we all know, the two children of Moses, you even know what their names are. Gershom. That's one, and the second one? Eliezer. Eliezer. Gershom and Eliezer. They, 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 they know in, in, in the Jewish people nothing. We don't know anything about them. She thought maybe be a third child, maybe this will be the Moses. That she wanted, she had good intention. But God didn't like it at all that she is giving Moses a pinch. She's talking to her and about Moses. First of all, if you have something to say, go to Moses and tell her. Don't tell Aaron about Moses. But more than that, it was a little more than that. She, but she had good intention. She wanted Moses to be married. She did it once. She was successful. If not for real, bravery was this wouldn't be on right she says maybe i will give birth to i'll make sure that there is another moses let's read in page 721 number four <clears throat> um, even before god heard it god heard it moses however you see this? Heard moses however was very humble more so than any man on the face of the earth wow the torah says it the torah testified that moses was more humble than any man on the face of the earth it means to say that what how could you be so humble? You, but what means to be, what means to be humble? Just for a little moment, what means to be humble? To it's say I'm a nothing. If somebody asks you, asks Mark, are you a doctor? He says no, I'm not. Is he humble or is a liar? <laughs> You're a lawyer. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, you lying. Being humble doesn't mean not to know your capabilities. You you thinking thinking that you are a schmatte is not humbleness. It's being a shmata. That's, that's a different name for it. Humbleness means to know and to know what you are, to know your capabilities, but to know, to, to, to understand that this is because God gave it to me. And if somebody else would have, somebody else would have this opportunity, he would do a better job. That he, Moses looked at every Jew in the Jewish people says, Moses knew that he's the leader, but he says, if Josh Moore would be, would he be the leader, they would do a better job. Shame on me. They would all do if they would have my opportunities, my capabilities, my talents, my parents, my power. They, what God gives me, they would do a much better job. 
that that was that was uh, mo that's why Moses was the most humble man, because he was thinking to himself always, anybody else would do a better job than me, if they would have my my chances. Okay, God suddenly. God suddenly said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, all three of you go out to the com communion tent. That was the place that God spoke to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the three of them went out, God descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the tent's entrance. He summoned Aaron and Miriam, and both of them went forth. For a private conversation, not in front of Moses. Because God couldn't, God said, God didn't want to praise Moses in front of him. And he wanted to tell Miriam and, and, and Aaron who Moses is. What is he telling them? Um, God said, listen carefully to my words. If someone among you experiences divine prophecy, then I will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak to him in a dream. This is not true of my servant Moses, who is like a trusted servant throughout my house. With him I speak face to face in a vision not containing allegory, so that he sees a true picture of God. How can you not be afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Okay, there is a lot to be said in these few lines. But let's take it little by little. He says, they, what, what Miriam said to Aaron, isn't God speaking to us too? He says, eh, heh, 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 heh. don't compare yourself to Moses. I speak to you, and I speak to you, and I speak to you. But, uh, but Moses is a whole different level. To all other prophets, God speaks by vision, by dream, by, by like, almost like by, 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 by pictures. For example, you see the prophet says, I saw a menorah. I saw, um, Joseph saw um, stars, or he saw the sheaves, right? Pharaoh saw cows, by, by different pictures. Face to face, mouth to mouth. It's not face to face. Pearl, pearl, double boy means face to face. A mouth to mouth. God speaks to a mouth to mouth. Means the clear vision that nobody has. Why do all the translations say face to face? Because that's really problematic and... Like the prior reference saying nobody can see God face to face. Pale pe means mount to mount. Just, but I the really English translations know. just really. I really that don't up. know why they use it face to face, Taki. I don't. Yeah, mount to mount. you can't see my face and live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mount to mount means like, a, like almost like a kiss of lovers. The idea is that I have an intimate relationship with them. That's what it means. Really? Why did Miriam get punished but Aaron did not? We'll get them. Sorry, so maybe, sorry. maybe. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, How dear you, you spoke about my servant Moses. You know what God told them? First of all, God says, He's my trusted servant. You know what means my trusted servant? A tzaddik, a real tzaddik, a big prophet, knows things about people, but he's not allowed to tell them. He sees a person, and he knows what's going to happen to him in a half hour. And he wants to tell him, don't go there, don't go! They cannot tell him. He's trusted. <coughs> As trusted servant means, you can trust him that he will not give out the secret. He's trusted in my house means God says, all the keys are open for him. I trust him all the, everywhere. A trusted prophet, trusted servant. Somebody gives that secret, there is a story about a Hasidic Rebbe, I think it was the Maggid of Mesrich, that once his disciple came to him and told him, Rebbe, I'm leaving, goodbye, I want to say goodbye. He said goodbye. He leaves, he tells his student, go, don't allow him to leave the city. Don't allow him to go home. They try to stop him, he says, the Rebbe told me I can go. Don't go again. He goes again, he says goodbye. He, says, goodbye. he goes again, he says, don't let him go. Back and forth a few times, the guy insisted to leave. He left, he went home, and he died. And he says, I knew it's going to happen, but I couldn't tell him that. I was not allowed to tell him that. If he would stay by me, he would, as long as he, stay, as long as he doesn't go home yet, he's okay. But he, but he tried. <laughs> In any case, then, but the question is, what, what, what the God was upset with Miriam and Aaron, how dare you speak about my servant Moses? If, I have, if Moses is doing something wrong, I'll tell him. Who are you to tell him what to do? Not that Miriam was, the problem was not so much the Loshanor and the this. The point is, Moses is God's servant, God's prophet. What are you giving him advice? He doesn't need aids. He doesn't need helpers. 
it's, you know, in, the, in this parsha from this week, we read about, you know, there were four groups on the sea. Before the splitting of the sea, one group said, let's go back to Egypt. The other group said, let's go to war. The third group said, let's commit suicide, jump into the water. The fourth group said, let's die. The all four were wrong. You know what they were wrong? Everybody is giving Moses advice. <laughs> and now, yeah, a, a, new, a new cabinet. Everybody is telling him what to do. The normal thing would be to come to Moses and say, Moshe, what should we do? Ask Hashem, what should we do? Everybody is giving advice. Everybody has an opinion. That's what God is telling Mo, uh, Miriam. How dear you spoke about Moses? If maybe Moses is doing something wrong. If Moses is doing something wrong, I talk to him every minute, right? I'll take care of it. Obviously, if he's doing it and I don't tell him anything, obviously it's not so bad. Then who are you to stick your nose? That was the, what God was upset. Why then what happened? God displayed... God, God displayed anger against them and departed. When the cloud left its place over the tent, Miriam was leprous, white like snow. She, became, she got leprosy. Why, why Miriam? Because Miriam told Aaron. Aaron was just a listener. It's not such a good thing, but Miriam, Miriam, Miriam turned to Aaron and told him, how dear, the only God speaks to, God, God speak to Moses, speaks to us too. Miriam was the one who, who, who doubted Moses, who complained about Moses. You understand? Aaron just listened. But she got leprosy. Now, leprosy means you have to go out of the community. Especially in biblical time, leprosy was a statement. Leprosy was a sickness for every bad thing you did. Not just for, like people think only for speaking Russian. No. There is many stories in the Bible of people who got leprosy. It was a king, forgot his name, wanted to enter the holy temple. And, and it wasn't, and the coin stopped him by the door and he wanted to, hit the coin, and at that moment he got leprosy on his, on his, on his uh, forehead, and he was locked up for the rest of his life. Um, according to the Medrash, Cain, God said, I'll put a, a sign on your forehead that nobody should kill you. What was the sign? According to the Medrash, it was leprosy. Um, oh. The story with Elisha and Gehazi was the, was the name on the whole. There is plenty of stories with leprosy. Then that was like a statement that it's an outside thing that everybody can see. That God is upset, displeased with you. She got leprosy. Okay, continue. What happened? Uh, when Aaron turned to Miriam and mm -hmm. saw her leprous, Aaron said to Moses, Please, my Lord, do not hold a grudge against us for acting foolishly and sinning. Let Miriam not be like a stillborn child who comes from the womb with half its flesh rotted away. Moses cried out to God, Oh God, please heal her. Moses gave the shortest prayer ever in the Bible. Five words. Eleven letters? How many is there? I don't know. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eleven. Kale, no reform, no law. God, cure her. And finished. No options, no maybes, no nothing. I want you to do it. And God listens to the word of the tzaddikim. There is an interesting Talmudic statement that when somebody saves a child who was lost to Judaism, saves them to Judaism, he gets the power of God. God tells him, you'll be like my mouth. Whatever you say will happen. If you give a blessing to somebody, it's going to happen. Guys, if you want to have the power of Hasidic rabbis, it's very simple. If you save a life, you save a Jewish kid to Judaism, you, God says, you will have the power and your blessings will be, will be fulfilled. Moses tells God what he wants, and it's happening. Okay, God said to Moses, you want to read? Right here. God said to Moses. Here comes the interesting part. <laughs> if her father had spit in her face, would she not have been embarrassed for seven days? Let her remain quarantined for seven days outside the camp, and then she can return home. Okay. And God said she has to wait for seven days. Here comes the amazing reaction of the nation. Go ahead. For seven days, Miriam mm -hmm. remained quarantined outside the camp, and the people did not move until Miriam was able to return home. The people then left for Chatzerot. and Afkemine. Seven days. It was a demonstration of love from the old Jewish people. It's not written that Moses told them not to go. It's not written that God told them. The whole nation, naturally, from themselves, 
wanted to wait for Miriam. They, Miriam was so beloved to the Jewish people that the whole nation was waiting for seven days. It's like almost like having a traffic, you know, it's like a jam. Nobody's moving. In the middle of the highway, nobody's moving for seven days. Everybody's waiting for Miriam. But are we following a cloud at this point? No. They were following the cloud, the cloud but the way it's written is, it's not that the cloud told them not to move. The way it's written is that the nation stayed and they wanted to stay for seven days. I'm sure that the cloud didn't go because if they, may, maybe the cloud moved and they didn't want they didn't move anyway. Well, there's but certainly a testimony from Hashem that the Jewish people wanted to be with Miriam. Exactly. That the, and could be could be that even even a message here that the Jewish people even decided for the cloud when it's going and when it's not going ultimately. Hmm. But here you see how much the Jewish how much Miriam was loved. Then how we came up with this idea that Miriam because of Miriam we got the water because the first the story before we learned Miriam singing right after this is a story that the Jewish people complained that they don't have water Moses got them water. The second, the, this, that we have three times in the Bible, three stories about Miriam we learn. Now we'll go to the fourth story, with just like uh, two words about uh, Miriam. Where is it? On page 763. Actually, 761. One line about Miriam in the bottom. Go ahead. In the first month, the entire Israelite community came to the Sian Desert, and the people stopped in Kadesh. It was there that Miriam died and was buried. Sounds very nice. Miriam died, huh? Mazel tov. I mean, Baruch died in the Hemes. Miriam died. The next line. The people did not have any water, so they began demonstrating. Ah, the what has suddenly happened? The people did not have any water. What happened? Talmud says Miriam died. There was no water. Miriam, Mayim. Miriam was in charge of the water. Now, why Jewish people need water? It's like the Torah. It's also for the mikveh. Need for the mikveh. Jewish women will not have the children. They don't have a mikveh that Miriam was always busy, mm. that the Jewish women should have children, she was the one who made sure to provide a river, provide water for the Jewish people to have, to have for the mikveh. Miriam was the mikveh of the Jewish people. She made sure that there is water for the Jewish people all the time. And therefore the Medrash says, then where is the, then wherever when the Jewish people used to travel, wherever they went, they found the water was be, walked with them. Somehow the water was there when they needed it. In the middle of the desert, we're going to find water. It was water. It's an interesting thing. In the desert, what's harder to find? Water or food? Or food you can buy from the neighboring um, countries. Naturally, water comes from heaven. And food comes from the earth. In, in the desert, everything was upside down. Manna came from heaven, and water came from, the, from, 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 a, from a river, from a, from a rock. Right? Twice it was from a rock. The whole, it was a rock that went with them, and somehow the water came out from it. And was all provided by, 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 by Miriam. That Miriam was the one who gave the Jewish people the water to drink, and this water, the Talmud says, then the Miriam's river, so to speak, um, Be'er, how you translate Be'er? Be'er is not a, is a, a spring. Yeah. Spring, whatever, is, is, is hidden in the Kinneret. And they say you can look in the Kinneret, the Medrash says, and you will see there is one spot where something is moving, like a little pot. This is, this is uh, uh, Miriam's river. Basically, the ri Miriam's river came to Israel and is hidden somewhere in the Kinneret. That's why the Kinneret's water is sweet water, right? Is she buried there? Miriam is, Miriam is buried in the desert. Miriam did not make it to the land of Israel. Not Miriam, not Aaron, and not Moses. And that shows, Miriam died before the story of the, of the eating of the rock. That shows that they, the tree didn't make it to Israel, not because they eat the rock, 
because they were the leaders of the Jewish people in the desert and their generation died in the desert and they stayed with, the, they stayed with their people. And now we know that Miriam means Mayim and Miriam was, gave life, Mayim is life really, life for the Jewish people. Yes, correct.